Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, I'm Anita Golash and I'm a real estate investor, entrepreneur and a medical student here in the UK. Welcome to my channel. I've been in the property business for the past seven years here in the UK and want to share my experiences here with you on my channel. My goal here is to create the ultimate health and wealth channel on YouTube. Today, I am going to be continuing on from my video last Thursday, where I am again going to be using my first property as a case study to talk to you about how to make an offer on a property once you've found a property that you like. So moving on from my video of last week, once you have done the viewing of the house, you've checked it out, you like the house and you think it's in a good location, it's safe, the noise levels are low and that this is a great property to invest in or to even live in, you now want to make an offer. So how do you go about doing that? This is more complicated than it seems and it depends on multiple different factors. The first factor being what is your budget? How much can you actually afford and what are you willing to pay for the property that you have just viewed and are interested in. The second is, is it a mortgage offer or a cash offer? Both require different things that we will talk about in a few minutes. Third is, what have the sold prices been in the market so far? So what is the market like at the moment? Are prices of houses above the average market value or, or is it way below the market average? This all will come up in your research of the area and the houses in the area. Fourth is what is the motive for sale of the seller? So is the seller a desperate seller? Is he selling for emotional reasons? How long has he been trying to sell the property for? All of this is very important to take into account. Oftentimes you are dealing with an agent who has a out of the book line for you on why the seller wants to sell, but it always helps to actually meet with the actual landlord and talk to him, have a chat about his motives for sale and that will give you more insight into what offer you should put. Next is the actual area. So how good is the actual area? Um, how desperately do you actually want the property? How good it is for the long run and long term investment? And finally is the actual yield. So if this is an investment property, um, does the offer you plan on making, does it actually help you get the yield that you want? A pro tip here for you guys is that if you've been in the business long enough and you've gotten to know people or you're just really good with people and you really charm them and they really like you, um, it helps to get property deals that are known as off-market deals. This is when you have a private broker on the side who gets to know landlords on a personal basis and is able to help you get properties before they even come off on the market. This is a huge advantage because it decreases the competitive offers on a certain property because you, you hear of the deal first and you get the deal first. So you're able to put in a price before anyone is able to offer higher than you and you're able to secure the property. Sellers often go for this because it benefits them because they avoid massive agent fees that can often be 3% of the value of the property as it is here in London. So negotiation points and things that put you at a distinct advantage. First being cash offer. With a cash offer, you're able to proceed much quicker than with a mortgage because a mortgage takes often months to arrange and they're often a more tedious process with a lot more people involved and a lot more paperwork. So if you have a cash offer, you're able to often negotiate a price to below asking price. And because you're able to act faster and the seller knows that if they're, go if they're going with you, they're able to get their money faster and it's more of a security. That's the first advantage. Second is reason for sale. So if you have a desperate seller who's very emotional, Maybe they're just divorced and they want to get rid of the property or maybe they had a fallout with their business partner and they want to get rid of the property. Or maybe there's sadly been a death in the family and they also want to just get rid of the property. This puts you at an advantage in the price you can offer because if their property as soon as possible, they're likely going to go for an offer that might be slightly below what they're actually asking for, but it's still a great offer. 
Third is market conditions. So if, if the overall prices in the market so lately have just been low, this itself puts you in an advantage thanks to the market. Fourth is if the property is in quite a bad state and needs a lot of repair work. So maybe it was just trashed by tenants or maybe it's just such an old property that the owner never had the funds to actually repair and now just wants to get rid of it. That itself puts you at an advantage because here you can come in um, and say, I am interested in the property. This is the max I'm willing to spend because the property needs X, Y, Z done to it and it will not be viable for me to offer any higher. However, this is the price I can offer and I'm good for this offer. The seller is going to appreciate your honesty and they obviously know the condition of their property. So if you're able to take the property off hand, yet while giving them a good deal, you are likely to have your offer accepted is if the property has been on the market for a long time. So as I said earlier, the length of time the property has been on the market does help you negotiate and can be a advantage point. Because if the seller has been looking for a while to sell this property and hasn't been able to, maybe people, maybe the deals kept falling, f falling through, which I've seen happen multiple times. And maybe they're not tired because they just want to get rid of it. They're likely to maybe accept a slight discount on what the last guy was willing to offer, provided the sale goes through. So keep in mind to find out how long the property has been on the market for and make, make your offer given that fact. And finally, final advantage point is if you're an experienced buyer, so if you've been in the business for a while, you know people, you have good relationships, maybe you've bought from the seller before or you've bought from this agent before, you you have your solicitor lined up, you have your surveyor lined up, you have everything in order. If the seller knows this and if the agent knows this, they're likely going to prefer you even if your offer is slightly lower than the next best guy. Now that too helps you a lot and puts you at a big advantage. Next, we move on to actually making the offer. So what, so what do we need to consider for this? So the first thing being, how competitive is the market? Are there 10 buyers offering for just one property or is it even worse? If it's a super competitive market, you can often get very carried away with just increasing your price, increasing your price, okay, 5K more, 10K more, or even, or even crazier. And this often is really bad because it cuts into your yields. Say you have a property that returns 30K a year and if you're gonna offer 10K more in that price, that's literally one third of your entire first year yield just gone. And it doesn't make any sense and it's not really worth it. Especially if the asking price is already really high and you're going way above that. So always balance it out with your budget and what yield you're actually looking for. Second is to have your mortgage agreement and principle in place. This is a piece of paper or a certificate that your mortgage provider gives you saying that this is the amount of money I'm willing to offer Mr. or Mrs. XYZ and it gives some confidence to the seller that you will be able to fulfill your the offer you place on their house. Is if it's a cash offer to have your proof of funds ready. So here if it's just yourself and all the money is in one bank account, great, good for you. However, if you're multiple buyers, you kind of want to bring your co-buyers as well and let them know, I found a great property, kind of think you should go for it and they require proof of funds. So you all need to get your bank account, bank statements in order and be prepared to show proof of funds. And fourth is to have your solicitor lined up and ready. So if you're in the business for a while, you already probably have a solicitor who's been who's used to your way of working and your the churn of properties you keep throwing their way. So that's a great. However, if you're new to this, you want to maybe maybe interview a few solicitors and see what the best deals are, the best rates are per property. And you want to make sure they are aware that you're in the process of looking for a property and that any day to any any day now you may contact them letting them know that you found a property and you want them to help you. And finally, you also want a great surveyor. So I tend to go with a level three building survey. This is a very comprehensive survey that tells you everything that's wrong with the property, everything that's good with the property. And also, I also tend to get a valuation report that tells me 
how much the property is really worth based on the sale prices of various different properties in the area that are similar condition and of similar status. I recommend getting a level 3 building survey because it's much more thorough and it often avoids any nasty surprises down the line like oh my gosh there's a damp that was covered up with a lot of paint or there's a floorboard missing or there are tiles falling off and the house is unaligned there's subs subsidence or whatever else that can go wrong in the property so all this good to be thorough and comprehensive upfront rather than incurring massive costs down the line another pro tip for negotiation you guys is to always play it cool you want to keep your cards close to your chest and you don't want to reveal your strategy or how much you're actually maximally willing to pay for the property so say you find a property you're very keen on and you know it would be a great investment at a certain price and you don't want to start by offering your maximum price you want to always offer below and then as the negotiations proceed you have more leeway to slightly increase it or even better if the owner is willing to give it to you for the low ball price you gave him from the start it just improves your yield drastically next we are moving on to actually submitting the offer so this normally happens in two ways. So there is a sealed bid where you physically write down your offer and you submit it in an envelope to the agent who then gives it to the seller or it could be best and final offers. This is something I see way more common in, in almost every single property. This is where there are multiple different people interested in a certain property that the agent or the seller decides a certain date by which they would like every potential seller to give their offer and everyone needs to email in an offer or write or physically give a paper offer more common these days to email an offer with your proof of funds or an agreement in principle and you do this by the certain date that the seller desires and you give given your offer and then you just wait and see if your offer has been accepted this can be quite nerve wracking and quite stressful because it kind of plays with your mind a bit. You know in your mind you have a certain budget but you don't want to start with that budget and you kind of think that okay if there are 10 people maybe they're offering below, below the max amount I want to and I don't want to overpay when they're maybe underpaying but you also at the same time don't want to lose out on the property. so. Don't let your get your emotions get the better of you. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you over offer or you go above the current market value, you may not be able to get your money out in the future. Because say the market has been at a certain value for 10 years and now because of this sudden rush to get certain properties that have a certain yield, you want to overpay because you think it's such a great investment or you think it's greater or better than investment elsewhere. However, if you are to overpay above the market value, fewer is on the line if you want to sell the property, it's highly unlikely the market would have appreciated to that level where you can actually get your money back because it's always better to under offer than over offer. And finally, another thing to consider when placing your offer is the fact that if you are with a mortgage, Mortgage lenders tend to send in their, their own surveyors who value the property. So these surveyors come in and they tend to value the property based on a bricks and mortar value rather than the business value of the property. So you might be putting in an offer based on the business value of the property and based on the yields you can achieve. However, they're going to come in and value the property based on the bricks and mortar value of what they think the property is actually worth and this is often a residential value as opposed to a business value so say you're willing to spend 300k on a property that yields 12 to 14 percent they are going to see this property based on the bricks and mortar value which might be only 200k so be prepared to be willing to make up the difference because they oftentimes will not give you all of the requested money that you would need in order to buy the property. Next, we are going to move on to changing or withdrawing the offer. So people change their minds, circumstances change both ways for you and the seller. So you are in, in, in England, you're not legally bound to buy the property. Once you've put an offer, you're free to withdraw completely or even change your offer. And 
this is not legally binding until actual exchange of contracts visit which is a process that happens later down the line we will cover that in later videos so this can happen both ways remember so you as a potential buyer might change your mind you might decide to withdraw completely or you might decide to lower your offer because you, maybe you've done a survey and you found that the repair works that the property requires are more than what you're willing to spend and you're unhappy with that so you want to now lower your offer and that, that's fair enough it's actually common sense to do that however what can also happen is that the seller might change their mind and take the property off the market which is quite sad or even worse they might actually decide midway to increase the offer of the property which is horrible it's very rare and doesn't occasionally happen but i have sadly had that happen to me where a few months down the line into the legal paperwork getting to the nitty-gritty about it to exchange contracts and sign sign the deal and finish it off and finally own that property the seller decided to up the offer that was absolutely painful because we had already done the math and the calculations decided that the yield that we wanted was great and appreciable and that this was a great property we had already invested a grand in legal fees so now we had reached the decision do we continue after having invested a grand or do we cut our losses go back to and search for property all over again and repeat the whole cycle all over again or do we redo the math see how much yield we're getting with this new increased price and does it still make sense luckily for us it still made sense and still met our minimum yield target and the property was in a good location potential for increasing rents even the following year and was in a location that made it easy to rent out and it was also in great condition so we decided to just go ahead accept the new increased price and potentially never deal with this seller in the future again because it was sort of a bad experience and not great for any potential buyer so know the rules of the different areas you operate in and what is required of you and any hidden costs that you might incur very important and finally the next step is either your offer is accepted which is great news you've got the property of your dreams or the business of your dreams and you're happy and things are great we will cover this in our next video or you've had the offer rejected and the world has come crashing down you're heartbroken and you're just sad and things didn't go the way you wanted to you've spent hours on the phone multiple emails back and forth, even more time viewing, traveling back and forth, and all of the whole hassle that it takes to find even one great property. But the secret here is that there's always another property. There's always another best property. Every time I thought I found the best property that couldn't be any better and I lost it, a few weeks down the line or a few months down the line, I found as good a property or even better. It's it just depends on how good you are at researching, how good you are at um, getting in contact with the right people and staying in the loop and finding the right people who can find the good properties for you or how good you are at looking for the right investment. Don't be disheartened, just keep looking. Maybe you need to modify your strategy a bit, maybe you need to find better people to be in touch with or more people that can bring you more offers to choose from and it all comes with practice the more you practice and the more you do this business the easier it is to get deals the faster it is to get deals and the greater the likelihood of you actually securing the property and seeing it all the way to the finish line so these are all the steps i had to go through from my very first property to every single property that i've bought thus far it doesn't really change much from property to property sometimes it's more complicated than the other depending on the area the location and who the tenants are going to be but these are the basic principles of making an offer and all of the things you need to consider when making an offer and getting the getting your first property or your 10th property or even your 100th, 100th property I hope this has been helpful for you guys. As always, please let me know if you have comments on what you would like to see next or how things can be improved. That's all I have for you today and I will see you in my next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching.